photographing mature ladies. I get this question all the time, and many times the women will comment to me that I'm too old, I'm too large, I'm too heavy. Your body is your body, and we all have to accept a point in life that we love the skin that we're in. The way people see you versus the way you see yourself, many times there is a huge chasm between the two. Most people, when they look at you, they see beauty. They see the beauty in your personality, the beauty in your smile, the beauty in your eyes, how you conduct yourself, how you treat other people. My job is to try and help capture all of that beauty in one package. So your, ba your body may not be completely the body that you had 25 years ago, but it doesn't matter. It's still beautiful. So when I approach that type of photography, I understand there may be some things that the client is not happy with. And taking that into consideration, if they can identify things that they want corrected, no problem. I'll do that for them. You know, that's going to happen in post. Most of the time I try to light in a certain way that I can hide or uh, position the model, the client in such a way that the things they're concerned about we're not capturing them so they don't see them coming across on the monitor and react to them possibly in a negative way. So if you look at this image here, I'll show you guys exactly how I set this up. I positioned her where you can see all of her curvature, you know, the beauty of her hair, her face, what have you. And I went with a very, very simple light setup. So if we look here, this was a three light setup. So I had my main light here and I had two separator lights on either side of her. One was more of a hair light, and this one on the far side, which would have been my left, was very low powered, but it was just to add a little bit more separation between the black background and her outfit so that you know we could easily take care of that in post. So it was a very, very simple setup. You know, if you look at it from you know any perspective, if you guys are starting out, like I said before, in many of your videos. You know, you can do this with very, very simple lighting. So easily enough, if you only have two lights, you could have easily have just used one light as your main light, another light here, kind of a separator, hair light, you know, whatever you want to call it. And then, you know, you're good to go. The rest is just going to be, you know, capturing your images and making sure that your client is happy and they're comfortable. And as long as they're comfortable, you will capture good images. That's the key. But remember, as I mentioned before, Planning is everything. So if you've already spoke with your client and you know these are some concerns, you could go in and you could start basically practicing, setting up your lighting. Those, you know, experienced photographers, I'm not talking to you because you guys, you know, just like myself, you've dealt with this many times in the past. So you know exactly what to expect. So you know exactly what you're going to be setting up, what you need to do. And then many times people are working in studios where um, the light's already preset for them. That's a good thing and a bad thing. The bad side of it is you don't really learn how to use the lights, how to set them up on your own. But the advantage to that is if you've seen images that have been captured in that environment and you know exactly what lens you're going to be using, you know, like for instance, this should be on a full frame. So we would zoom back in and that would put us right about there. So if I switch this over to the camera's perspective, that's what we're seeing. Okay. And if we jump back to that image that we were just looking at, that's very similar to what we're seeing here. Okay. So once I capture the image, as I said before, you know, the client had some concerns. So what I would usually do with this image is I would open it in Photoshop. Obviously, um, I try to, if time permits to do a baseline edit while the client is present. So I would just open the image. And then we would walk through a couple of things. Now, this image I've already edited somewhat, but I'm going to go ahead and go all the way back to when I first opened it. And you'll see what I did here. So she was concerned about her chin. She was concerned about her tummy. Um, you know, a few um, things on her legs, things like that. So starting out, once I got my white balance and everything exactly the way I wanted it, I still lighten this up just a touch, just so right about there. 
That'll be good. Okay, so let's move. Let's go ahead and flatten that. And we're going to zoom in and see exactly what we're working with here. Okay, so the simplest way to fix a lot of these imperfections, if that's what they want to call them, is to go into Photoshop, go into Liquify, and then choose your face tool. Then you can go in here and you can adjust the jawline a little bit, the chin, just little simple things you can do. Don't do it, you know, don't go crazy with it, but you can do just basic, you know, editing there, just to, you know, adjust the jawline a little bit. And then what I would do next is then I would go in with a smaller brush with the push tool, and then I would just kind of push it up just a little bit, just to kind of round it out. And then even here on the shoulder, I'd bring that in just a little bit. And then we could go down here to the tummy, adjust my brush. I'm just going to push that in just a touch. Try and keep everything proportional. And then here, because of the way she's sitting, I want to round this out just a little bit. So I'm going to increase that. And I'm just going to just round that out just so it looks natural. And then just a little bit here. So I think everything looks perfect. So then obviously the next thing I would do, if she wanted these removed, these little um, lines on her legs, you know, you could easily go in and you could, you know, start removing those. You just need to brush about the size of what you're working with and just go in and just start touching those up. And you don't need to get all of them because your airbrushing will pick up a lot, will get a lot of these. But if they're larger ones, you know, that she's, you know, pointing out to you, then just go in and show her that they can easily be, you know, taken care of. Start getting those. You may have to do a couple of swipes on it. But anything that you see that your client may be concerned about, you can just go in right there and just make those adjustments. And then usually that's pretty much it, other than you know softening of the skin, because that's usually going to be the next thing that they'll ask for or they'll want. So let's say I would go in here and just to crop this, get a good crop on it, and then we're going to zoom in here. Now, <clears throat> again, it depends on which airbrush technique you want to do if you want to do something really advanced where you're doing some dodging and burning and you're doing some frequency separation a lot of plugins offer basically the same thing and that's what I use um, I may use portraiture sometimes I'll use on one you know other times I may use uh, perfectly clear and even um, Luminar AI you know has some really cool things so you know we'll just do something really quick here I'm just going to use um, Perf well, no, I tell you what, let's do this because this is the one that most people will have. So we'll say um, Portraiture 3. So we'll go in and we'll look at that. So we'll zoom in real close here. And you can already start to see what it's doing. It's softening the skin. Now, you can always soften it more if you chose to. So you could go in and choose the skin itself. And then you could add, you know, the amount of fuzziness, the, you know, the, the feathering, you know, or if you want to go with a really strong airbrush, you could do that because you have the difference between normal, medium, and strong. And then you also have some presets here, you know, where you can go in and choose from those. But we're just going to say just for the sake of this video, we're just going to say we picked um, the medium. And then you can almost, I don't know how well this is going to translate on YouTube, but if you turn it off and on, let's zoom in a little bit. Off. And it just removes some of the harder lines, things like that. And when you look at the image, you know, that's exactly 
what I would deliver to the client without going to any extremes. Now, it really, again, it depends on the client. You may have some clients that want some really extreme editing, but most people just want to see their best self for that day. And that's what I was trying to achieve here. So hopefully this information has been beneficial to somebody out there, whether you are a a photographer or you're someone considering boudoir photography and you have your concerns, most photographers should be able to offer these exact same services without any problem. And if you want, you know, anything further than that, you know, communication is the key. So make sure they understand exactly what it is you want and what you're expecting. And if they are comfortable with that, I don't see any problem uh, going forward. So I'm going to bring this video to an end, guys. I just want to do this video for, um, you know, to basically answer a question because I've gotten this this month alone, probably about five or six different times. So I wanted to go ahead and just do a video so someone could see, yes, I know that, you know, if you're, you're looking at social media with most photographers, videographers, yes, we are posting a lot of, you know, younger models or, you know, things like that. But that's just because that's just the way the algorithm works. So, but many of us, you know, our everyday clients look exactly like this woman that you see here, you know, and we're, our job is to capture her beauty and present to her a product that she's going to be happy with for years going forward. And most likely, if they're happy this year, they'll be back next year, you know, or a couple of years, you know, to do another photo shoot. Plus, guys, don't ever forget, a happy client is the best advertisement you can ever have because their word of mouth is more powerful than all the Google ads you could pay for. All right, guys, this has been your boy, Rome. I will catch you guys in the next video. Don't forget to stay safe, wash your hands. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. Until next time, stay safe. Peace. I'm out.